Hello friends, welcome to Lake Shawnee, an abandoned amusement park in the hills of beautiful West Virginia. They also say it's haunted. Welcome. Definitely one of the most interesting places that I have ever been. Wow. Lake Shawnee was an amusement park with a dark past. It was open for two different periods. First from 1926 to 1966, and then second from 1985 to 1988. There was a period of time when the park was starting to decline, that the family that owned it turned this back area, past that outhouse to the tree line, into like a mud event. So they just have big trucks and you know, see who could get through the mud. You've seen them on TV and stuff. Well, that's what they did here. And it got a little unsafe because the crowd started getting bigger and bigger. Well, they were going to use this area as a mud pit as well to expand. And they started to find human remains. So uh, archaeologists came in and all the people. They did a dig until the money ran out and they found a lot of remains. And they believe that there are several thousand remains of Indians and pioneers buried right here on this land. It's a very sacred place. This was a stone that they found in that excavation and now they used it as a tribute to all of those that remain here on the grounds. I always wanted to do a floor out of here with, with, with epoxy on top of it. I always thought that looked cool. Our tour guide out here is really awesome. He's got some great stories. I'm learning a lot. You can't take video on all parts of this and during most of his uh, presentation here, but we're following him around the property and I'm, I'm loving this. This is really a cool, cool place. Rest in peace, Indian friends. Allegedly, cart number 10 is haunted. There's many photos that people have taken over the years show an apparition right above that as if someone's sitting in that cart. Ferris uh, wheel came in 1985. Once one of the main attractions at Lake Shawnee, this motorized swing was the last ride that one little girl would ever ride. This swing with the jack-o'-lantern bag is the exact swing that the little girl died on many years ago. Apparently the story is a truck that was filling that big tank. It used to be positioned right next to the swing. And the swing didn't always used to be here. It was near the entrance of the park. A roadway went right by it, and a truck that was filling that backed up a little too far as the swing was running, and the little girl hit the back of the truck, killing her. And that was the end of that. They say that she hunts this whole property along with several other ghosts, and all the way back to what some say, 2,000 years, of spirits dwelling in this place. Some people have come here, a lot of TV shows have been here. Um, he listed like 15 or 18 different TV shows, a lot of which are haunted themed TV shows. Some of the stories that Chris explained were pretty terrifying. In fact, some of those hosts of those sh shows won't even come back here anymore because they've sensed so much and it's been overwhelming for them. So this swing, is particularly a hot spot, so they say. If you'd like, you can bring a little toy or something you think that the little girl would appreciate to play with and leave it here or leave it on one of these other swings. Hey, Lake 
Tony hat on. And I said, what are you going to do with that van? It's a cool old truck. A local guy, I think he had a dealership. He had that truck and offered it for 300 bucks and a tour for his family of Lake Shawnee. That was a good trade. Something I know a lot of you are gonna appreciate is these paddle boats here. Not for the marine purpose, but the inventor of those paddle boats was also the inventor of the Singer sewing machine. The company that made those had the patent on some gearing in that Singer machine and decided to make these paddle boats as a hobby. And here they sit. Pretty cool. This was the concrete swimming hole, a giant pool. They used to be called concrete swimming holes. And old pictures of this place, this, this part of the park was really, uh, really popular. 1966, the mother drops her son off that morning. She returns in time for the lifeguard to blow the five o'clock whistle. Her son's nowhere to be found. She thinks that he walked home. She goes to the house. He's not there. She comes back to Lake Shawnee. They find him at 7 p.m. that night in the bottom of the pond with his arm stuck in a drain pipe. I'm gonna wrap your hair up and let you run in and get it, okay? This pinwheel is said to be a way that spirits communicate with the visitors here. I did see videos of them asking it to spin when there's no wind and it spun and then it stopped when they asked it to stop. Interesting. Chris mentioned a story about a guy that came out here after hours. He drove eight hours to get here just to experience something and he didn't know any of the stories about this place but felt called to come here. Very weird thing happened to him over at the swings but he came over to this building and took one step inside, about to take his second step and was lifted up and thrown back around the grass area here. Uh, you go figure that one out yourself. Still walking. old TV. I don't know if I could see myself living in a school bus or like a big RV. I really like the stealth part of being in the fantasy. This thing is huge though. I do like the luxury of all this space. Whoa. It's right next to me. Weird. And this bird nest. That bus belonged to a gentleman named Gaylord White. How do I know that? Because when I went back in there and sat in the driver's seat, he came to me and told me, just kidding, there was a, a keychain sitting next to me there. I was just you know, rifling through some things. 
and uh, had his name and his telephone number on it. I think I'm attracted to that bus most of all out of the entire place because the guy lived in that bus for, I don't know, I don't know how many years, but he dropped it off here like 20 years ago. Apparently, like five months after his death, which I'm not sure when it was, uh, somebody had taken a picture of that bus and there's an apparition that looked very much like him and a couple windows back so they believe that he's haunting the bus but as with all of the spirits on this property the consensus is that they're all good they're positive spirits definitely a positive spirit lived in this guy this RV was used in a TV show on the I think it was Discovery Channel where a guy lived in this for 45 days. They wanted to see what a guy did when he lived in a RV for 45 days in an abandoned amusement park. The answer is nothing. He didn't do anything at all. So I can't imagine the TV show was really awesome, but I'll give it a watch. Lake Shawnee's dark history didn't begin with just the deaths that happened at the amusement park. It happened long before that. The first settlers of this area had some tragic stories. You can see the Ferris wheel behind me. And right here is a very important grave marker. Bartley and Tabitha Clay. These are one of the 12 children of Mitchell and Phoebe Clay. The story goes that Indians came by and uh, three of the children were out uh, near the house, one was washing clothes in the river nearby, and the other two were closer to the house. Well, the mom uh, heard some uh, motion and hustle and bustle out in the field. The daughter had come out to see what was going on. The Indians were attacking the two boys, eventually killed the daughter and one of the boys, and then held another son hostage. They took that other son back to Ohio. His dad armed himself with a bunch of friends and neighbors, went to Ohio, killed some Indians, found his son burned at the stake, brought his son's body right back here and buried them. All three are buried right here. Although the gravestone only says the two names, the two, the two kids, Bartley and Tabitha. The third child that died, I can't remember his name. His, the story goes that his dad brought him back right here and buried them right next to the other two kids. Why? The, his name is not on this, I'm not really sure, but the three children are buried here. And in fact, this is the exact spot where they were slayed by the Indians. Chris, our tour guide, he won't even come back here. He said he used to mow the grass here, but he doesn't even walk back here anymore. The house they lived in is right over there in the little area of trees. They were the very first settlers to this county and in this part of West Virginia. It's a beautiful part of the world. The fantasy does not like mud and I'm stuck. Old Chris got me unstuck. That was good. For part of the fundraising that Lake Shawnee does, they have this lake nightmare during Halloween time. It's a haunted house. You know, you pay an admission fee. This year they had 18,000 people that toured this. Let's go check it out. Hmm. Okay. structure. Okay. Well, our tour guide Chris was really a great guy. Let us just free roam. Me and one other uh, fellow was on the tour. This abandoned amusement park, it's not so abandoned. People have owned it and uh, 
kept things going out here. They do some charity work and, and so on. They have a haunted house, haunted situation out here during Halloween. You can stay the night on the property and it's open for tours by appointment only. So I had to call the number I found on Google. I'll put that below along with the website. You just have to call them or text them and they'll uh, bring you out here and give you this awesome tour. This place is a trip. Thank you for joining me today, friends. I appreciate it. This has been a really interesting adventure to the abandoned, likely haunted Lake Shawnee Amusement Park in the beautiful hills of West Virginia. I appreciate you joining me today. If you are in the area and you want something of the paranormal, that's an interest of yours, I definitely recommend stopping here and paying the $30 admission fee to have one of these awesome storytellers walk you around and tell you some inside information that you just won't find on Google. Friends, this was awesome. Thanks for joining me. If you like what you're seeing, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. One more thing I thought I'd share before I left the Lake Shawnee abandoned amusement park. Chris came back to help me pull the van out and I told him that I left a penny because of all the, the reasons I've explained in other videos and that uh, you know I see it on grape sites often. So he, he shared some stories and then when he came back to help me unstuck myself, he said, you know, on the way over here, I found a penny right as I was getting in the car or something, you know, in that transaction and said, what, what, do you think that was coincidence? I don't know. What do you think?